We bought a Surface Book 3 for video editing. Wait, what? Why would we do that? Well, firstly, we're a Surface team here. All of our staff have their own Surface. And we love Surface products primarily because they push the boundaries on new form factors. Things like the Surface Studio and the Surface Book. And Surface continue to focus on a quality pen experience. We think it's really the best in the business for the non-artist. And quite frankly, we think that computers without pens belong in the 1980s. And over the years, this channel has become a little bit Surface centric. And because of that, we want to know what's possible on a Surface Book 3. And for us, it's all about video editing. And that's because we're a video production team. In addition to these YouTube videos here, we produce videos, how-to videos for companies like Microsoft, for HP and many other customers as well. And we use tools like Adobe Premiere Pro and Camtasia for our video production. A lot of our video is filmed in 4K, so the files are big, therefore the performance requirements are high. In fact, you'd generally be better off with a good desktop PC built for this task. It'd be faster, it'd be more flexible, at least when it's on the desk, and it would last longer. But for many people, that's not ideal. For us, it's not ideal. Our team are currently working from home. Sometimes they do come into the office for a video shoot or to do some editing. And sometimes we get out of the office for a video shoot too. So the question for us was, would a Surface Book 3 work for video editing? Would it be acceptable? And what benefits and what sacrifices would a Surface Book 3 bring to the life of a video creator, editor, and director? Looking at the specs, the Surface Book 3 appears to be up to the task. It has a 10th generation quad-core Intel Core i7 1065G7, consumes about 15 watts, and it could flex up to 25 watts for a short period of time. In comparison, a desktop version of the Intel Core i7 will run at about 65 watts, and it could perform between 25 to 100% faster. Why? Well, the desktop processor has a lot of room to work in. You'll find it's got a great big heat sink or a liquid cooler sitting on top of it that might sit out 15 centimeters over the top of the processor. The heat generated by a processor running with this power simply won't work in a device as thin as a laptop. And the processor, RAM and SSD in the Surface Book, they all sit within the screen. And the screen is thin. It's eight millimeters thin. It actually feels less than that, especially on the 15 inch version that we're using. The processor circuits in the Core i7 are now 10 nanometers in size. That's pretty tiny. But the smaller the circuit, the less power they use and the less heat they generate. The Surface Book 1 and 2, both had processors with 14 nanometer circuits. So with this generation, we expect to see a little bit better battery life, better performance, and also less heat. And things have not been perfect for the Surface Book 3 here. There are many people on Reddit who've had issues with thermal throttling, especially for gaming. It's likely that these kinds of issues will be tuned over time. But for video editing, well, we found that the performance is pretty good. The fans take a little bit longer to kick in, and although it heats up, it does better than previous models as we'd expect. Behind this great keyboard and trackpad is a massive big battery. And also an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti Max-Q graphics card. Now this will be really helpful for us with some of the effects and rendering work that we'll do on the Book 3. Oh, and something that gets a special mention is the SD card slot on the side of the keyboard base so handy for video editing and photography work. So how does the Surface Book 3 perform for video editing? Well, for our tests, we used Adobe Premiere CC with the latest updates, and we optimized the program for use on our Surface Pro 6, Pro 7, Book 2, and Book 3, so that we could get a really good comparison. We'll bring you a separate video on how to performance tune your Surface for video editing soon, but for this test, we ran four of our previous videos through a render test. We rendered all of these videos in H.264 YouTube profiles, some in HD, 1080p, and some in 4K or 2160p. Here's how the Book 3 performed. 
The first video that we used, you'll find here on this channel. We'll leave some links in the description below. It was our use OneDrive video. Now it's a pretty big video. It's a relatively complex timeline. It's about nine minutes 40 long. Originally we shot it in 4K and we exported it in YouTube H.264 settings at 1080p. As you can see, it was pretty quick to render on the Book 3 at four minutes and five. Now Olivia is gonna love this because it took at least 32 minutes to do that on her old Pro 6. The next video was a wedding video montage with lots of filters, effects and cuts, a lot going on, but only three minutes 57 long. It was shot in 1080p and exported with the H.264 YouTube 1080p profile. Now we had to deal with a few bugs with this particular video on the Book 3. It didn't like the Adobe After Effects transitions that we used on the video at all. And so we ran into some issues with GPU encoding. So this test was a bit of a fail, but it was interesting nonetheless. With a relatively new and complex device like the Surface Book 3, there are always some weird things that you might run into, especially early on. They'll probably be fixed over time with new updates. It's annoying, but it's not a showstopper. We expected this render time to come in at around three and a half minutes, and instead it took seven minutes. Video three was our Surface Pro X review. It was a long video, 1143, and we shot it in 4K. But we exported this one in 4K using the H.264 YouTube 2160p profile. Olivia, I'm so sorry that I made you do this on the Pro 6, but hey, next time you're gonna gain 41 minutes when you need to export a video like that. The last video was our video on working from home. A relatively short, three minutes 47, shot in 4K again, and rendered this time in 4K using the H.264 YouTube 2160 profile again. And as you can see, it rendered on the Book 3 in one minute and 53 seconds. Okay, so this new Surface Book 3 is a massive step up for Olivia, who's been working away on an i7 Surface Pro 6 for a couple of years now. And I found comparing the Surface Pro 6 to the Surface Pro 7 really interesting too. The rendering performance on the Pro 7 has doubled from the Pro 6, and yet it's still overshadowed by even the Book 2 because of that NVIDIA GPU. Now I should point out that most of the videos on this channel over the last two years were edited on that Surface Pro 6. So the Surface Book 3 is way beyond the minimum requirements for video editing in Premiere Pro. The Pro 6 worked, but the Book 3 is two to five times faster at video rendering and playback is much smoother too. Another one of our editors, Tate, has had the Surface Book 2 15 inch. Now going from the Book 2 to the Book 3, that's not so much of an upgrade, at least not where video editing is concerned. Although the Book 3 has a much better graphics card than the Book 2, it's really only part of the story for video editing. Video editing is more heavily reliant on processor, RAM, and SSD, with the graphics card really just being a nice bonus on top. So if you're looking at the Book 3 for video editing, it's really only an incremental upgrade over the Book 2, perhaps a 20 to 25% performance improvement. Now work like 3D design, this would be a completely different story. So just to reiterate though, the Surface Book 3 is not a device that you would buy if all you did was video editing. Also, we optimized the settings of Premiere Pro to maximize the performance, and we'll share another video on how we did that very soon. So maybe you're wondering, how does the Surface Book 3 compare to other laptops? But stop it, it doesn't. It's not a laptop. That's not the point of this. Because the Surface Book 3 is a different device, it's in its own category. Now you might be tempted to compare it to a two-in-one like the Dell XPS, but don't. Because the Surface Book is not what we used to call a convertible, it's a detachable, it's a hybrid. When you've detached this magnificent screen and opened up OneNote or Whiteboard and picked up your Surface Pen, you've entered a world that you really can't get to with a two-in-one. Now, if you're thinking, but I just want a high performance laptop, I don't really care about the tablet thing, then this is not for you, at least not yet. And what I mean by that is that you're not ready for a Surface Book yet. Now I've heard a lot of people over the years say things like, I've never detached the screen on my Surface Book. 
And that's because it's not something that you could ever do before, at least not on your previous laptop. They never had that functionality. So it's not a part of your behavior or your workflow and the things that you've established over many years. And when something requires you to incrementally change your behavior, it's unlikely to happen that is without sufficient motivation. And even then, sometimes it still won't happen. The point is that to really use a Surface Book, to really need it, you need to change your behavior. You need to adopt a new way of working. Some people do this without thought. They're called early adopters, and they represent only about 5% of the audience of any given thing. In change management terms, the rest are known as the early majority, the late majority, and the laggards. With devices like Surface Book, you'll only find a small portion of reviewers who actually get this thing. They're seeing the benefits of a digital canvas. They're the early adopters. But Microsoft have been at this Surface game for long enough now that we're actually starting to see a significant number of people start to adopt completely new ways of working. The early majority is now in play. And that's currently been helped along by this pandemic with people being forced to work from home. I'm seeing a lot more people switching up their Surface and using it with that pen, really taking advantage of a new way of working. This will be completely normal in 10 years time, and I'll have to find a completely new way to be different. So what's all the fuss about the Surface Pen then? Well, a pen is an incredible creative tool. And I'm not talking about art here. It's a creative tool in the hands of anyone who holds it because it's a visual and spatial tool. It works across a two-dimensional plane, unlike a keyboard, which is really one-dimensional when you think about it. And because of that, it's more expressive than a keyboard. We use it all of the time on paper when we write things. We underline, we highlight, circle. We connect concepts together and draw diagrams. Now, five of those six things are non-verbal. So they really can't be done adequately with a keyboard and mouse. And those non-verbal visual and spatial things are what helps us to remember and to process things. So you'll find that your performance is better for all sorts of things when you use a pen. And that's where the Surface Book 3 really excels. Now in video production terms, well, we begin with an idea that we jot down with a pen. We create an outline, usually with a pen, we convert it to text and type it up, and then we review it and give feedback with a pen again. We storyboard the shots with a pen, we take notes against the script while we're on set with a pen, and we make notes on the final edit with a pen. Now the Surface Book form factor enables this like no other device. And if you're a video editor, you're probably already doing those things on paper. So why bother changing and investing the time to learn this new way of working and doing things? Well, for starters, digital tools allow you to work together with others no matter where they are. And at the moment, at least where I live, none of us are together. And even if we could be together, well, for us, half of our team are 2,000 kilometers away. So digital workflows allow us to seamlessly work with visual and spatial creative tools without regard to distance. The downside to being able to achieve all of this with the Surface Book 3 in this form factor is that there is some sacrifice in performance, at least compared to a desktop or a high-performance laptop. So is this the solution? Well, it could be. Having all of your work on one device is a benefit that I think you can easily underestimate. Devices like iPads, Android tablets, they're pretty amazing as companion devices, but they bring with them mobile apps, complicated workflows, and lots of potential distraction. And I guess you could get many of the benefits of that Surface Pen using a smaller device. You could use a Surface Go 2, or maybe even a base model Pro 7 as a companion to a more powerful desktop computer. But to have one device that can dock on your desk with a great keyboard and mouse, hooked up to two 4K screens at 60 Hertz that can almost instantly convert to a mobile edit anywhere solution and a creative pen canvas, for me, that's transcendent. But like all things transcendent, 
It takes a fair bit of effort, changing and adapting to get there. Even with our many years of experience, we still regress and start doing things old ways at times. But if you're prepared for a bit of an adventure and you want to invest the time to change and learn, then you'll never look back with a Surface Book 3. Ask us any questions about the Surface Book 3 in the comments below and feel free to share your experience there too. If you found this helpful, remember to give us that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tips on how to use your Surface effectively. Why am I looking at myself? What is wrong with me? <laughs> ah, come on. Stop it. Sorry. Flipping recorded this time. What would you know? <laughs>